At that point, you know I had hope and I wanted to have faith in the system. Sandra Stevens' family met with investigators within a week after they had found their daughter, their daughter dead. The very day that Sandra Stevens was found dead, her family began compiling a binder, which they considered a homicide investigation of their own doing. Um, they, in there, they piled in their questions, her social media accounts, and then a few days after that, they took the binder to police. They gave them a copy, and the family and the detectives sat down for a Q&A session. Police say it's not unusual at all for a family to doubt a loved one's suicide. Um, and the Stevens family did have some concerns. They told detectives the brutal way that Sandra chose to die, which was she put a shotgun in her mouth, um, was totally out of sync with who she was. I mean, she was in cosmetology school. She was really careful about her appearance and all that. So that, that was shocking to them. She'd also, to their knowledge, never even held a gun in her life. So that was an odd choice of weapon, a shotgun. It's a really intense gun. It's powerful and violent and I mean, they were just taken aback by that choice. Sandra had told her parents that very night that she was instead found dead, that she was breaking up with her boyfriend and moving back home, and they expected her home within days. She came home to, uh, to tell us that uh, she was, um, um, that she had problems with him, that he was always questioning her, where was she going, that uh, he didn't trust her because he was accusing her that she had somebody else or she was cheating on him. And she never made it. She, I mean, we found her clothes packed, so she was uh, ready to come. And The family also told detectives that she had been in relationships before and she had never um, let breakups, even in much more serious and longer relationships, squash her spirit. So this felt really out of sync with her relationship history. Jackie, Sandra's sister, pointed out to detectives that she'd pulled all her sister's social media correspondence with her boyfriend, and it had showed that he was tracking her uh, using GPS and just extremely controlling, which she thought was potentially dangerous. Not every suicide victim will get a full autopsy, and that's commonplace across the country. But Sandra Stevens family really pushed for one. They wanted an autopsy done, they wanted toxicology tests run, and they actually asked the state to run more toxicology tests than what was normal in this type of case. And um, the state did com you know, comply with this request. Um, the family hired a private investigator to help them push some of these things along and um, decided that Besides just doing the state autopsy and toxicology tests, they were going to get their own tests done on, on their daughter's body. The family left that meeting unsatisfied and unable to believe that a thorough investigation was taking place or would ever take place. Him and I thought that they were gonna do their job. And then you never hear from them again. I never heard from them again. Ever. Sylvia Stevens got a call from her daughter, Jackie, Sanders' older sister. Jackie had been monitoring the Facebook page, Justice for Sanders Stevens. Jackie told her that the page got a message. The message was that another woman, 21 years old, three years ago, had died in the exact same way that their daughter had died. The same boyfriend was present, he called 911, and it was ruled a suicide and that family of that woman also doubted the story. Phone calls were made, and it all culminated into a meeting at the Stevens family kitchen table. Sylvia Stevens met Colleen Schustrom, who was Holly's mom, who had long harbored doubts about her daughter's suicide and also suspected the boyfriend. 